we want to pull them up and look. All right, so there are two lab FRQs. Um, the first one, if you look with me, Uh, so that's zooming in, so that's not, that's too big. <laughs> I got zoomed out. I'm still talking, and it's going to be one of those awkward ones. Did you see the last awkward one I did? That's awesome. Okay, so anyway, we have a string is attached to a solid disk of mass M and radius R. The string is wrapped around several times. Starting from rest, the student pulls on the string with a force F. In terms of the given quantities and fundamental and physics constants, pardon me, Determine the following, the net torque on the rotating disc, the angular acceleration of the disc, and the angular displacement of the disc in two seconds. So the whole point of this question that I dreamt up the other day was that you would have all the things that you would need to answer it. Here's the center, and here's this, and this is R. I mean, this thing has a mass M. But that... It would um, lead you to give you some ideas of how to set up the lab problem, part in B. So if torque is force that's perpendicular to the displacement times the displacement, and we know that the force applied is F, and the distance that force is applied is capital R, then that is all. The net torque on the rotating disk is just the force applied times the radius. So then in part two, you're asked to find the angular acceleration of the disk. So this is where we use the other half of that whole, the net torque is equal to I alpha. So I found that there's either, there's two groups. Um, we've got the, uh, I was going to come up with a joke about Democrats and Republicans, but either we have you that believe that torque is F times R, or we have you that believe that torque is I times alpha. And I'm here in the middle saying, it's the same thing. Can't we all just get along? Okay? So, if you have the forces and their positions, then you can find the net torque. You can also find the net torque by knowing the moment of inertia and the acceleration. Either. So, I know the net torque is F times R. This was a disk, and hopefully you've learned that one-half M R squared is the moment of inertia of the disk. And then that gives us an alpha of a 2 F R over one-half M. I don't mean to have the half there. Sorry. Um, over a capital R squared, which would reduce to what? 2F over M R. So that's all I was looking for there. So part three, you're asked to find the angular displacement of the disk in two seconds. You just solve for the angular acceleration. Hint, hint. You're going to use that next, okay? So yes, you're right. Angular displacement is um, equal to the angular speed times time. If the angular acceleration is zero, sure. But is the angular acceleration zero? No way. So I can use the idea that the change in position is equal to omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared because guess what? Rotational motion is follows the same rules that linear motion does. We, we have motion, we have forces, we have energy, we have momentum, all of those things for objects to move in a circle. Okay, so um, if I want to find delta theta and it starts from rest, it'll be one half alpha, which I believe was 2f over mr times t squared, which I gave you a number of 2. I could have left it as t, but f 2f over mr was the acceleration, so that's what I substituted in for alpha there. And you get, what, 4f over mr. That would be the change in angular position.
That's it. That's all for that one. Now, the next part, we're asked about this experiment. So, the disk is replaced with a non-uniform disk of unknown mass. I don't know how to tell you that you can't use one-half mr squared for this thing other than saying those words, but it's non-uniform and it's unknown mass. So what are you going to do? We've got to come up with an experiment to determine the moment of inertia still using the, this equipment that we have, this force meter. We've got a force meter and we've got a meter stick and we have a timer and or the, the spring scale is the force meter. Um, so I want to determine the moment of inertia. Well, I know that if I apply a force at the radius, that will cause the disk to rotate with an angular acceleration. So, because I am a ninja at doing um, graphs, that means that FR is kind of like in, let me write that, FR is like in the position of Y, and this would be like the M, and this would be like the X. So I could graph the force applied at the radius, versus the angular acceleration, and the slope of that line would be the moment of inertia. Now the force would be easy. I would use the force meter from the spring scale. That part is easy. So I need the angular acceleration. Now to find that, if I use delta theta is equal to one half alpha t squared, I bet I could measure how many revolutions my disk makes. Can you watch something go round and round? Can you count how many times it goes round and round? All right. So we would uh, count the number of revolutions, multiply that by 2 pi, and that would be our angular displacement. Can you time that? Can you watch something go round and round and use your stopwatch? So we're going to time that number of revolutions and then we can find the angular acceleration. And then we can use this equation here to solve for the angular acceleration is 2 delta theta over t squared, and we will have our force at r, and we will have our angular acceleration, and we'll have a bunch of points because what are we going to do next? We're going to repeat for multiple forces. How about that? Okay, number two is about BB-8. We've got a uniform disk with a mass capital M, radius capital R, is to be used to determine the moment inertia of a non-uniform irregular object. So again, I was trying to make it something you can't just calculate. So I came up with a, a drew BB-8. It's a bunch of shapes put together. Anyway, so the disk is attached to a sensor that measures the angular velocity. Have we done a lab where you had a disc attached to something that measured the angular velocity? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Right. You dropped the thing on it. All right. You are to design an experiment that allow you to determine the moment of the irregular shaped object. So we're going to describe our experimental setup. So I'm going to do this in a fast way here. But we would have this disc attached to the detector, and we give that disc a spin. And that would be its initial angular speed. And then what did we do? Yeah, so you take BB-8 and, and you, you drop him on here, but you would drop him in the center. And then what would you notice about from, from the out reading of the, the sensor? This is the omega reader. What happened? Yeah, so, you know, didn't you see like that, and then boosh, and then like that? Okay, did we do it just one time? No, we did it multiple times. Oh, my goodness. 
So if we use the conservation of angular momentum and that the sum of the initial angular momentum is equal to the sum of the final angular momentum, then I of the disk times omega naught would equal I of the disk plus I of VB8 all times the final angular speed. So then if I were to graph omega naught, and then I had I disk plus I of B, B, 8, all that, divided by the I of the disk times omega. This thing is in the Y position. This whole blob, including what I want to find, is in the slope position. And this final guy right here is in the X position in terms of a straight line. So what would you graph? Initial versus final. And I know you are controlling the initial, so it would truly be best scientist ever to put omega naught on the horizontal axis, but that the fact that you get two variables that are related to each other correctly on each axis and the slope of that line would be what? I disk plus I of B, B, 8 divided by I of the disk. Can you find the I of the disk? Yes, and if that's equal to the slope, could you find the moment of inertia of BB8? So you just need to repeat for multiple initial angular speeds. So you have a bunch of these guys, and you can get a bunch of those. All right? Adios. Have a nice break.